President Obama's decision today is the latest sign that this administration is in over its head. The President's original plan was to strike Syria and send a sign to all nations that the use of chemical weapons will not be tolerated. But by stalling for nearly a month while broadcasting our potential strategy to the entire world, the U.S. is now in the weakest possible position. I said from the very beginning that in order for me to support such a strike, the President would have to define our mission, our exit strategy, and the costs associated. After two briefings from the White House, they still haven't answered any of these. It is not the responsibility of our men and women in uniform to risk their lives enforcing the President's red line when our own national security is not at stake. But now the President has agreed to cooperate with Russia and China, who are not our allies, to make Syria hand over control of its chemical weapons while still maintaining a credible threat of U.S. military action. Americans have spoken up. They don't want this war. And now, this administration has allowed the world's superpower to be backed into a corner by its own foes. To make matters worse, Americans have heard from Assad even before our very own president. The toughest, most serious decision lawmakers face is the question of whether to commit ourselves to a military action. While the atrocities in Syria are unforgivable, the civil war does not present a clear and present threat to the United States. With an ever-changing muddled message from the White House and our diminished credibility, I cannot trust this administration in making the best decisions with regard to our national security. And for that reason, I still do not support American intervention in Syria.